Hi, this is Freya with another singing tip. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today I want to talk about the home of your vocal cords, your neck. Now while the head is very important for resonating space, your neck is also very important and its position can determine whether it's easy to sing a pitch or not. So if you want to find out about correct neck posture and position and how it can affect your sound, stay tuned. Have you ever noticed that whenever something gets really hard when you sing, you have a lot of tension, especially in your neck? Now what a lot of people do, they shift their neck forward. This is absolutely not good for singing because whenever you have tension in your neck, whether it's shifting forward or whether it's just like, just kind of making it all tense and contracting it and flexing it, whatever it does, it's right here are your vocal cords and your larynx, all that good stuff that is responsible for actually producing any sound is pushed on. So those muscles that are in your neck, they are all around and you can't really isolate those. So whenever you have a lot of tension in your neck, you shift forward or you kind of like tense up. You see this? You see how those muscles, even here, right around this area where my vocal cords and larynx are located, they are, it's very hard. And you don't want that to happen whenever you sing. You want to stay relaxed. It's very hard to do that. But a really good exercise is this one right here. Take a book, stand against the wall, put the book on your head, try to balance it. Now try to sing. You should breathe in without trying to move your head and you should sing without moving your head all the time not being tense here leaving it very relaxed for example yeah, yeah. Whenever you sing fast moving notes, especially then, that's a really great exercise to control whether you're moving around your head and doing this. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times people do this without realizing it. So try the exercise with the book. It's going to feel awkward at first, but it's really going to help you just kind of become aware of what you do with your head or what you tend to want to do. Now the next thing that we do a lot of times and um, I actually know where it comes from because I read a book that wasn't even about singing that explained that putting your head up whenever you sing in a high voice and putting your head down you sing a low voice it's, it's, a, it's very deeply ingrained in our brains psychologically. When you notice, whenever you sing hi, you don't want to just lift up your head, you want to lift up your whole face, you want to smile, you want to be like, oh, make it very wide here. And whenever you sing low, you have a tendency to look low. Now the reason for that is that it's so deeply ingrained of evolutionary in our brains that high is friendly and high is for little kids, high is good and so we smile and we are in a very good mood so we are lifted and whenever something is low it's bad, maybe dangerous. That's something that is so deep in us and a lot of us do it automatically but whenever you sing, you have to get rid of this habit and it may be really difficult for you, but it's such a great thing when you don't have to do that and you, you, you just really can't do it when you sing. It's, first of all, it looks ridiculous and second of all, it's no good because whenever 
you do this position right here, up, you, it's kind of like pushing down on your larynx and that's not good. It's gonna, it stops this from vibrating very freely and it sounds very pressed and narrow. Vice versa, when you go down, it's kind of like you're cutting off your throat right here. So these are all positions that should be avoided. You should be in a very neutral, relaxed position. You know, not backwards, not forwards, not down, not up. And now sideways, sometimes whenever you do a show or you know where you have to act, pretty much you can do anything that you want to with your body except when it you know whenever it puts strain right here. So there's a degree on far how far left or right you can go with your neck without this being pushed. So you just kind of have to try it out. You can go left and right a little, but don't go like this because I can already tell in my speaking voice this is it's it puts a lot of strain right here. So try to look for the position that's the most comfortable. Now always keep in mind your basic posture. Be lifted, but have your shoulders and your arms loose and relaxed. Be lifted from the abs right here. And then the rest up here, I always say it's like nothing's happening. From the chest up, you should be very calm. There shouldn't be too much movement. You shouldn't be stirring around too much. I always tell my students like don't stir around. Like a lot of times also what we do is with our heads like we kind of just like direct ourselves like there's a conductor we conduct. It's kind of like we count with our heads like when we do an exercise. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't conduct yourself with your head. If you need to count the beats use your little toe. Nobody could see that and that doesn't put any strain on your vocal cords. So I hope these tips helped you today and that's a really important point that I made today. Hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check back next Tuesday because I've put up two singing tips every week now. On Tuesdays I talk about a song and on Fridays I do like this uh, in a more technical style. Also check back for any songs that I upload um, frequently. I try to do more and also check out my blog at friassingingtips.com and uh, as I always say, which is kind of like my life's credo, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing because it's really good for you. And if you can bring a smile to someone's face by singing a song today, that's the awesome thing to do. Bye.